welcome to today's lecture. We shall continue our discussion on the response of uh, aqueous carbonic inclusions to uh, heating freezing cycles. These inclusions are present in a typical triphase that is uh, liquid uh, aqueous liquid, carbonic liquid and carbonic vapor or in a biphase like a, like the two liquid uh, carbonic liquid and aqueous liquid with a vapor phase uh, nucleating at a temperature lower than the room temperature. And uh, we have uh, browsed through the response of these uh, type of inclusions to freezing and uh, uh, subsequent warming of these inclusions to record the phase changes and uh, as we discussed in the last class the melting of the solid carbon dioxide and the partial homogenization of the carbonic component to either to vapor phase or to liquid phase are very easy to record and uh, these changes are very well observable under the microscope uh, while doing the experiments in a heating freezing stage. And uh, total homogenization of such inclusions to either to the carbonic liquid or to aqueous liquid is also uh, observable as and when it actually uh, uh, is achieved without uh, affecting or without uh, decrepitating the inclusion, because we know that with the gradual increasing mutual solubility uh, between carbon dioxide and the aqueous component, the as we are heating the inclusion more and more internal pressure is exerted on the inclusion walls. And depending on the size of the inclusion, the inclusion if they are of uh, moderately larger size inclusions then they are very likely to decrepitate or burst with the loss of the content and those inclusions uh, are just lost and we cannot make any further observations on them. So, the only tricky affair about the these inclusions and their thermometric response is the formation of this uh, clathrate phase and the melting of the clathrate phase, phase which is to be precisely recorded. And there it most of the times it uh, becomes a little problematic, because uh, the uh, practical tips that we uh, that I tried to give in the last class that only when we see that the meniscus between the car two liquid that the carbonic liquid and the aqueous liquid become distinct. And uh, when the boundary is actually diffuse because formation of this uh, carbon dioxide uh, clathrate. And uh, many a times it so happens that the bit of a metastability in the clathrate melting is also observed. So, only on those cases where the clathrate melting is well recorded with uh, reproducibility such data can only be accepted. And if we look at the diagram again which what we discussed that uh, this is a uh, the, these two curves they represent the uh, depression in the dissolution temperature of the carbon dioxide clathrate compared to the ice melting curve both of which get depressed when the aqueous liquid is charged with electrolytes of variable concentration. Here we are showing the aqueous uh, liquid is from 0 wet percent NaCl to any higher and such kind of <coughs> curves can be, <coughs> can be approximated with uh, uh, equations like the one which is a second order equation in the temperature of dissolution of clathrate. And if we recall such melting temperature such kind of equations will be they will be valid for situations where the temperature of uh, partial homogenization of the carbonic phase is greater than that of the temperature of dissolution of clathrate. Means, the temperature of partial homogenization has to be at temperature above 10 degrees Celsius corresponding to the pure uh, aqueous liquid which will make the clathrate melt at exactly 10 degrees Celsius. And then we have to adopt separate set of uh, equations if the temperature of homo partial homogenization of the carbonic component takes place before the temperature of dissolution of clathrate. So, temperature. So, in that case it will not correspond to that four phase condition and then separate sets of equations have been devised in both uh, liquid phase as well as vapor phase homogenization that are available in the literature. We will uh, we will see the equations later on, but they are, they are in any case function of the temperature of dissolution of the uh, cloth rate and in similar kind of form with the uh, fit parameters. Uh, so, 
Now, to summarize <coughs> the microthermometric parameters that we retrieve from the aqueous slick carbonic inclusions is the temperature of melting of carbon dioxide, which uh, happens at minus 56.6 if the carbon dioxide is pure. In such in kind of situations, also the carbonic liquid could be uh, <coughs> having a variable concentrations of methane. In those inclusions, also we can expect the carbon dioxide melting to be taking place at temperatures below minus 56.6. The temperature melting of clathrate it can happen anytime anywhere between 10 degrees Celsius to uh, minus 20. Temperature of partial homogenization of carbon dioxide it can also happen at temperature gray less than or equal to 31.1 and it can be at any lower temperature depending. So, that will only indicate the density of the carbonic component in the aqueous mixed carbonic inclusions and the temperature of total homogenization. <coughs> so, uh, as before as, as it is done to the other inclusion types like the aqueous biphase or aqueous polyphase or the pure carbonic inclusion. For these inclusions also we need to determine the density and the uh, isocore construction of the isocore. In the previous uh, uh, cases in the pure carbonic and the aqueous inclusions we have uh, such kind of uh, readily available uh, regression equations where we can put the value of the temperature or the salinity and then get the density or in case of the pure carbonic inclusion we get the temperature of homogenization of the carbon dioxide liquid or giving input on the methane variable methane concentration and we can calculate the density. However, these uh, situations we uh, do not have such kind of very straightforward equations in which we could put uh, the values and can get the density. Because here the density is a the or the molar volume is a complex function of temperature, pressure and composition. The composition here in this case is actually defined by the composition of the carbonic component even if it happens to be pure then the total uh, concentration of the carbon dioxide in, in, for in terms of x CO2 of the fluid and also the weight percent NaCl equivalent of the aqueous component. So, that is why the situation is a little bit uh, indirect uh, in the in case of the aqueous carbonic inclusions. So, we will in this uh, uh, class we will try to discuss a little bit about the methodology uh, which is uh, uh, adopted from workers in the field of fluid inclusions and also some additional input in house. If we recall in, a, in, in the situation of an aqueous biphase inclusion through mass balance considerations and density of the inclusion at temperature of homogenization and the density of the liquid aqueous liquid at a reference temperature let us say 25 degree Celsius using that we use to calculate something which is the vapor by vapor by vapor plus liquid we used to calculate the the volume of the vapor divided by the total volume. So, volume of the inclusion which is the volume of the vapor plus the liquid and we neglect we neglect we uh, by in, by neglecting the density of the vapor phase at 25 degree Celsius we rearrange this equation and we got this uh, value as a function of the the density of the uh, inclusion at uh, the density of the liquid at 25 degree centigrade minus the density of the inclusion at temperature of homogenization divided by the density of liquid at 25 degree Celsius. So, by this with the ratio that we get that we can see at the V by V plus L or the volume fraction of the vapor which sometimes is an important parameter even uh, not getting uh, the different modes of homogenization, but we can see how the uh, the degree of fill or the vapor by vapor plus liquid ratio uh, was changing. Now, we can use the same uh, equation to a situation where there is 
uh, if we consider the aqueous carbonic inclusion in its biphase condition let us say this is the aqueous liquid and this is the carbonic liquid considering the situation where uh, the vapor phase is already homogenized. So, this could happen at any temperature and near about uh, a reference temperature close to room temperature. So, this situation we can also apply such kind of a mass balance uh, consideration and can have uh, the situation pertaining to a to an aqueous carbonic inclusion in its two phase condition. Unlike the aqueous inclusion scenario, here uh, we can say that the uh, the carbonic phase is representing what was the vapor phase in case of an aqueous biphase inclusion and the uh, liquid of the this uh, liquid phase was actually the liquid aqueous liquid also here in this case the dh the what aqueous liquid and the density of the inclusion is same as the density of the inclusion at total homogenization. So, here since we cannot neglect the density of the carbonic component at room temperature. So, we have to take into consideration and the equation could be rearranged uh, in this manner. So, here what are the parameters here the, the this is the density of the inclusion which we do not know right now and this is the one which we the exercise before us is actually to calculate the density of the inclusion at the temperature of total homogenization. The density of the aqueous phase or dh2 or whatever i have written here this uh, density is the the, the density of the uh, aqueous liquid we can always consider that at the temperature at which we obtain a two phase condition anything between 31.1 to any lower temperature and uh, so that we can apply this particular uh, equation and this kind of form of this kind of formalism the methodology essentially does not involve any visual estimation of any of these phases like the carbonic phase or the uh, aqueous phase. So, this uh, value this density of the aqueous liquid can be calculated from standard formulations when we know the W NaCl in terms of weight percent from the dissolution of the cloth rate. So, the same uh, term here in the denominator and the density of the carbonic component is also obtained from the temperature of partial homogenization by using the equations which we discussed before. So, now the job at hand is to calculate the density of the inclusion at the temperature of homogenization. And this is a ratio which is giving which is uh, which will give us the volume fraction of the carbonic component. So, this volume fraction of the carbonic component can be uh, converted into a mass fraction and ultimately in turn the mole fraction if we do some kind of a normalization. Like we can consider that let the inclusion be 100 cc and from that from the volume fraction. So, knowing the aqueous liquid density and then the uh, mole fraction of the uh, NaCl and H2O in the aqueous component and then <coughs> uh, do, do a normalization procedure. So, that this volume fraction can be converted into a mole fraction which will be given in details in the calculations which will be provided to you in the handout. So, now the uh, with these we, we do not know this parameter and the one so uh, to calculate to ultimately have a fraction of the volume uh, of the volume fraction of carbonic component we will have to calculate the density of inclusion with the other two parameters known. Uh, this this particular equation when it is put in this way it actually uh, corresponds to a real in situation in the fluid inclusion. So, it can always this particular equation can always be checked for a consistency that means, if we have the density of the this particular right hand side of the uh, expression with this density of the total inclusion and the density of the aqueous phase and the carbonic phase the 
uh, we can always go on refining this as we take different values of the, mol, uh, the uh, different approximations of the mole fraction of carbon dioxide, but then use this particular equation as a cross check as to whether they are the both the sides are matching. So, which we will be uh, discussing in detail about the process. So, here this uh, our uh, this is the uh, phase diagram of the aqueous uh, carbonic system. Here it is the it is 2 CO 2 and this can be considered representing a pseudo binary where the aqueous component has a fixed weight percent NaCl. So, we can have such kind of uh, solvers separating the two liquid region from a homogeneous one phase or two liquid phase region separating a homogeneous one phase region. Also a, a similar way in which we used to see the uh, pure H 2 O C O 2 phase, phase diagram. So, the situation that we were talking about is that our inclusion we, uh, would have been trapped at any temperature in, in this one phase region and with the decrease in temperature the inclusion as a post entrapment uh, phase change got splitted up into two components that is aqueous component and carbonic component and the aqueous component has uh, uh, some uh, weight percent NaCl or other electrolyte, electrolyte dissolved in it. Uh, as we discussed before such kind of uh, solvi are very much pressure uh, dependent. We can have the homogeneous one phase gradually expanding with uh, with higher and higher pressure this this dog uh, boundary actually goes down with expansion of the uh, homogeneous one phase region uh, and the contraction of the two phase uh, situation and the vice versa with decrease in pressure the uh, the immiscible region which is defined by the presence of the two liquid expands at lower pressure. And so, at different uh, pressure, so these, these phase diagrams uh, which are also taken from literature, uh, they are representing the, the same phase like, like what we did for the pure water or the water NaCl system. In this case, we can also have them for the pseudo binaries in the H 2 NaCl CO 2 system considering the compositions to be at fixed carbon dioxide mole fraction and fixed NaCl mole fraction and have the uh, phase diagram drawn showing the one phase and the two phase conditions. Here below this particular curve is the two phase uh, two liquid stab stable condition of the immiscible regime and in this region it is the miscible regime and as you could see here. Uh, and these are these are essentially not critical curves, but these are curves which will be drawn at uh, the uh, different uh, taking the consideration that the two phase boundary at different pressures and different composition in terms of NaCl weight percent and XCO2. So, here we could just uh, uh, the what is very uh, evident from here is that compare if we compare these two diagrams here the it is NaCl free the the x NaCl is equal to 0 in both the cases, whereas the carbon dioxide concentration is increased from 0.05 to 0.1 and we see that the two phase region is kind of expanded and it has a kind of an inverse relationship. That means, with increasing temperature we are getting uh, decreased uh, or with uh, with the decrease in temperature we get higher and higher pressure at this uh, curve becoming almost parallel to the y axis. And if we consider these two diagrams here the x CO 2 is higher from 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 and x NaCl is also uh, from 0 to 0 0.0193 may be corresponding to some 6 weight percent NaCl in the aqueous component. So, these uh, divide the region into the two phase this is a two phase region this is the two phase region and this is the one phase region and <coughs> these thin lines are the isocores. These thin lines are the isocores and uh, these isocores going from 1, 2, 3, 4 they represent the isocores of uh, lower and lower density 
and their dp by dt slope is also decreasing and as per our understanding the inclusion under consideration which is present as a uh, mixed aqueous carbonic inclusion in its biphase or triphase condition as we see them in room temperature and by the assumption of homogeneous entrapment which was entrapped at any pressure temperature condition in the one phase stability con region. So, these uh, these are the uh, these are the uh, trajectory of points of equal density and these isocores. So, the inclusions are going to follow. So, once we get the homogenization, so the <coughs> these boundaries either this or this or this will actually be corresponding to the conditions of homogenization. For example, when we say that it inclusion is homogenizing a total homogenization that means, it could be anywhere anywhere on this uh, in this curve or anywhere on this curve any point point and that is that is the condition uh, to the homogen the total homogenization condition. So, the total homogenization once we uh, obtain the total homogenization condition the inclusion uh, is should follow any of the isocores depending on the density and the same logic also holds here that we need to have some independent uh, consideration of pressure or temperature to ascertain the other or to do precise uh, thermobarometry which we shall see later. Uh, now, such diagrams what we have seen here is the since our molar volume is a function of pressure, temperature and composition. So, we can only think of having such kind of uh, the phase diagram with like the like the one shown here two of the compositional variables are kept fixed or the composition is kept fixed. So, that we can plot them on the PT diagram. Such kind of diagrams also we can translate onto a pressure x u 2 diagram. So, these in this pressure x u 2 diagram these these are the isotherms these are the isotherms and here the difference is that the on this pressure and x u 2 uh, where x u 2 is increasing in this direction here the one phase region is the one which is to the left of this diagram and the two phase regions is towards the right of the diagram. So, here this is the immiscible region and this is the uh, region of one phase and as such we see. So, this temperature if this is temperature T 1, this is T 2, this is T 3, then T 3 is greater than T 2 is greater than T 1. Say for example, this could be 250 degree Celsius, this could be 300 degree Celsius or so this is 350 degree Celsius. So, these represent also the phase boundary separating the uh, one phase from the two phase on a pressure x 2 diagram and similarly, when you are obtaining the total homogenization, the homogenization is taking place corresponding to points anywhere on this two phase boundary depending on and these, these kind of diagrams also have to be constructed at fixed W n S C L of the aqueous component. As we know that we have uh, taken uh, this phase diagram on a pressure and x u 2 diagram that means, we have to have a fixed temperature and fixed W n S C L. So, this, this indi indi individual uh, curves represent the two phase uh, the, the boundary between the uh, immiscible and immiscible regime that means, the when we are obtaining the homogenization total homogenization it corresponds to the uh, value of pressure uh, unique uh, combination of pressure and temperature pressure and x co 2. For example, if if suppose if our W n S C L is 6 weight percent and the temperature of total homogenization is uh, 250 degree Celsius then the total uh, the uh, inclusion the uh, the homogenization condition could be could be anywhere on this p x u 2 curve. So, we need to constrain exactly where it is whether it is here or suppose for example, we get a point reach a point here then we know that it is actually uh, falling on this particular isotherm. 
So, either the case the phase diagram that we discussed on the pressure temperature phase diagram or on this particular phase diagram, when we try to calculate the density. So, density means which is related to the molar volume. So, it is uh, definitely the situation is that the molar volume is a function of pressure temperature and composition. Here what we do not know is the x CO 2. We know the x NaCl in the aqueous component and we do not know the x CO 2. So, if we want to. So, for example, if we want to take help of this kind of uh, um, equation as we all know that these equations are essentially they hold good to real gas and the inclusions that on, uh, that we are considering are not gases, but we are there in their liquid state. Still these equations can be used if we have a combination of theoretical considerations and empirical fitting of experimental data we can combine and kind of uh, fit semi empirical equations which would be applicable to the liquid state also depending on the the temperature and pressure ranges of the experimental data that is available. So, this is all the same readily Kong equation which we will be using here to calculate the density we see how we do that. So, the system is essentially considered on various pseudo binaries by specifying the W n S C L of the aqueous component and uh, we see how uh, we proceed for our calculation of the density of the total inclusion that is the total molar volume the total density of the aqueous inclusion of the of the mixed aqueous inclusion at the temperature of total homogenization. So, if we are using the modified Redlich Kong equation or is to start with the Redlich Kong equation. So, we have to. So, here is essentially a mixture it is a pseudo binary it is a mixture and in this our mixture terms the A and B the pressure correction term and the volume correction terms the can be expanded in the form that this mixture is summation over I and summation over J. So, here actually I uh, should be varying from uh, 1 to n and sim sim similarly also j varying from 1 to n and this can be expanded as. So, here if we are considering depending on the system that we are choosing here. So, if since we are considering a pseudo binary. So, that means we will have two uh, components. So, we will take I n is equal to 2. So, here I will be varying varying from 1 to 2 and so this kind of uh, uh, equations could be expanded with terms which will be coming like. Uh, so, here the if we take 1 for the aqueous component and the 2 for let us say carbonic component. So, in this equation we will have the when both i and j are equal to 1 you will have the x 1 square I can write it here. So, this is i equals to 1 to 2 j equals to 1 to 2. So, this becomes x 1 square a 1 plus x 2 square a 2 plus 2 x 1 x 2 into a 1 2. So, that means we are getting the terms. So, in since it is a binary in any case any of the uh, compositional terms like the mole fraction could be replaced by 1 minus the other that means x 2 could be always be putting as 1 minus x 1 and here as we know. So, this is the suppose the mole fraction of the aqueous component this is the mole fraction of the carbonic component and this will be the a of H 2 O and this will be a or a for the aqueous component and this will be a for the carbonic component. For the time being we will consider the system to be bethen free. So, a 2 will be considered corresponding to the pure 
uh, term the pressure correction term for pure carbon pure uh, carbon dioxide and here the pressure correction term for the aqueous component as we know it is not pure it, it is charged with sodium chloride, but that can be handled. And then the similarly the uh, B, B term also it is I equals to 1 to 2. So, here it will be simply as x 1 B 1 plus plus x 2 B 2 means here the B of carbon dioxide which is known as we know that the values are available in literature as pressure and temperature independent and the B for aqueous can be also be calculated. So, we will uh, continue discussing on the on this particular method of determination of density and the iso core for the mixed aqueous carbonic inclusion from available uh, information on the parcel homogenization of the carbonic phase, the WNSCL of the aqueous component and having a total homogenization which has been reproduced and without the inclusion actually leaking and uh, doing the homogenization experiment. So, that uh, we homogenize the carbonic uh, and the aqueous carbonic uh, inclusion and also when we cool them they come back to their original position original uh, configuration. So, we will continue discussing in the next class. Thank you.